I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. They Live is held in very high regard by conspiracists, especially if you're a movie buff like myself. This movie was, or is, The Matrix of the 80s, a film that portrays a sinister hidden reality most people can relate to because they know deep down that something in the world just isn't right. Though the movie often seems cheesy, it nonetheless conveys a strong message about the elite of the world and its utilization of mass media to keep the population under control. The star of the movie, Roddy Piper, was noted on Twitter saying, They Live is a documentary. This was roughly two years before he died in 2015. Of course he was joking, at least a little bit, right? This movie is one of those rare subversive stories that forces viewers to question their world and their surroundings. Because despite the fact that the movie is about ghoulish aliens, it communicates truths to the viewers that are only alluded to in mainstream movies. In fact, looking deeper into the storyline, one might realize that there's probably more science than fiction in this story. Are the aliens in the movie an imaginative way to portray the world's elite, those who secretly run the world, those that we call the Illuminati? Let's revisit this cult classic and see how it describes the hidden rule of the elite. Right from the beginning, as we see Nato walking around Los Angeles with his backpack, the movie sets a particular mood. Something is not quite right. There is a sense of impending doom in the air. Poverty is rampant, helicopters fly all around the city, and street preachers speak of soulless beings that rule the world. They have taken the hearts and minds of our leaders. They have recruited the rich and the powerful. And they have blinded us to the truth. Our human spirit is corrupted. Why do we worship greed? Because outside the limit of our sight, feeding off us, perched on top of us from birth to death, are our owners. Our owners, they have us, they control us, they are our masters, wake up, they're all about you, all around you. Is the preacher's description of the masters applicable to the Illuminati? As we follow Nada's aimless drifting across the city, the camera often focuses on people gazing blankly at television screens, mindlessly absorbing the feeble messages it communicates. Regular Joes appear to truly enjoy their television shows, until an obscure organization hacks the airwaves to broadcast subversive messages about the hidden rulers of the world. Oh, natural looking, easy to apply nails, pre-colored in seven luscious hues, just... Our impulses are being redirected. We are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. Oh, goddamn hacker, that second time night that asshole's cut in. The movement was begun eight months ago by a small group of scientists who discovered, quite by accident, the signals being sent through time. Thing's giving me a headache. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> Must took the hackers months to figure out how to do this. The poor and the underclass are growing. Racial justice and human rights are non-existent. They have created a repressive society, and we are their unwitting accomplices. Their intention to rule rests with the annihilation of consciousness. We have been lulled into a trance. They have made us indifferent to ourselves, to others. We are focused only on our own gain. We Please understand, they are safe as long as they are not discovered. That is their primary method of survival. Keep us asleep, keep us selfish, keep us sedated. The average Joes who watch this pirated TV broadcast all get a massive headache. The raw truth is indeed too much for most people to bear. 
One such viewer switches the channel after telling the guy on TV, Blow it out your ass. Just like today, most people do not want to hear about this kind of stuff. They just want to go back to playing on their phone or mindlessly viewing television. Nada realizes that the street preacher and the man on television are connected through a local church. When he sneaks into the church, he discovers that it's actually the headquarters of an underground organization. On a wall inside the church is written, They live, we sleep. A phrase that describes the fundamental difference between the elite and the masses. Those in power know the truth about the world and possess the means and power to truly live. The rest of the population is sedated, dumbed down, and manipulated into a zombie-like state in order for it to be easily manageable. Nada learns that the rebellious organization is attempting to recruit people to take down the rulers. However, a few days later, Nada sees just what happens to those who plot against those in power. Helicopters, bulldozers, and police in full riot gear raid the place, destroy everything, and arrest the members of the underground organization. That is how the elite respond to contrary views. After witnessing the violent police shakedown, Nada begins to realize that something is wrong in America. The guy who believed in working hard and following the rules is starting to believe that something is completely out of place here. Determined to learn more, Nada re-enters the church and finds a few interesting things. First, They Live, We Sleep has been painted over. They don't want that message to be known. More importantly, Nada discovers a box full of sunglasses. While the sunglasses appear on the surface to be worthless, they actually provide Nada with the greatest gift of all, the truth. When he has the sunglasses on, Nada sees through the smoke and mirrors projected by advertisement and mass media. He only sees the core of their message and the only reason why they exist. No matter which magazine Nada flips open, he sees the same subliminal messages, which tells a lot about the true function of celebrity and fashion magazines. Despite the fact that they are all different, they all ultimately serve the same purpose, to reinforce messages from the elite to the masses. Nada also quickly understands the truth about money. It brings a whole new meaning to the phrase, in God we trust. Nada's most shocking discovery concerns the people around him. Some people are not human. They are from another race that has infiltrated society. Nada realizes that they are everywhere and that they hold positions of power, like this politician giving a speech on television. When the aliens realize that Nada can see through their disguise, they immediately alert the authorities, saying, I've got one that can see. Being able to see is obviously frowned upon by the aliens. They do not like to be exposed. Nada quickly becomes a social outcast and aliens start closing in on him. I don't like this one. Nada and everyone in the city are constantly monitored by flying surveillance cameras that are oddly similar to the new unmanned drones that are currently appearing around the world. Flying surveillance cameras were considered science fiction in 1988. They are now a reality. The concept of truth-seeing sunglasses is an interesting way to illustrate the importance of knowledge in one's worldview. Two people can be looking at the exact same thing, yet perceive two very different realities depending on the level of information and awareness possessed by each person. Nada's sunglasses can therefore represent one's knowledge of the truth which allows a clear perception of reality. Upon learning the appalling truth about the world, Nada feels the need to share this vital information with his friend, Frank. Nada, however, quickly realizes that some people do not want to hear about the truth. In fact, many actually get angry and offended at the simple mention of something that alludes to it. When Nada asks Frank to put the sunglasses on so he can see what he sees, Frank firmly refuses and calls him a crazy mother Nada replies with another classic line. Either put on these glasses or start eating that trash can. Followed by one of the longest one-on-one -on -one fight scenes I have ever seen in my life. A scene that is dragged out for so long that it becomes utterly absurd and even comical. While the scene maybe appears ridiculous, it says something about the difficulty of making regular average people wake up from their blissful